I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're thrilled to present a powerful book. It is called Someone Prayed for Me, A Story of Faith, Hope, and Love. It is written by a remarkable author. Her name is Annie Beckley Newell. And this profound narrative embarks on an emotional odyssey, exploring the depths of the human spirit in the face of adversity. The author masterfully illustrates the journey of two souls united by divine intervention as they navigate the treacherous terrains of the mind, confronting love, pain, and the quest for worthiness. Witness the transformative power of prayer and God's guiding hand in this captivating tale of faith and redemption. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight. Today, we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Annie, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Great to see you as well, Logan. <laughs> this is such a powerful book. It's such a testament to the power of prayer, uh, a renewal of faith. Tell us a little bit of the overview. Tell the folks at home what the book is about. Well, the book is about uh, two lonely hearts. Um, one of the main characters' name is Lola, mm -hmm. Nola. And um, the other character is Raymond. Um, Nola is experiencing a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. And um, that depression is taking a dark turn for suicidal thoughts. So I take the uh, reader on a journey throughout the book well, where God's hand is in the midst of all of this chaos. And he's navigating her um, towards hope. Um, she can't see love around her right now. So he's peeling off the layers over her eyes and showing her the love of her family, her parents, and even a new love is kind mm. of thrown into the midst of everything where she finds uh, a new love as well. It, it's a wonderful story. It's a very inspired story. Where did your inspiration come from? Did you Well, my inspiration, it? Okay. it actually came from a dream, okay. believe it or not. I would even call it more like a vision because when I was experiencing this dream, it was so realistic that I could actually feel the wind blowing while I was in the dream. Wow. So I I, I kind of teeter between dream and vision, but um, I could tell that she was in distress mm. and I could tell that her heart was very heavy. And when I woke up, I got immediately on my computer and I started typing everything that I saw, all the emotions that I felt. Mm. And I typed all the way through the night until sunrise wow actually yeah. i was just so full and um this character was uh birth from yeah. that amazing. nola alice amazing you know you sometimes wake up in the middle of the night and you've had such a vivid dream it could be a happy dream a terrifying dream something in the middle something truly creative too and if you roll back and go to sleep it's almost impossible to recall your dream Yes. So you were so you smart to, to get up. Yeah, you have to just jump up and secure it in that moment. Right. Because it's so profound in your mind at that time. Yes. Yeah, it's in such vivid details uh, that uh, it's amazing how we can go from vivid detail to disappearing. But I'm glad you preserved it by getting up and writing all night long. Tell the folks at home the significance of the title, Someone Prayed For Me. Someone Prayed For Me is an awakening. Because if you ask the average person, um, have anyone ever prayed for you? They would say, well, I don't know. So mm -hmm. my answer is, yes, they have. You have people all the time praying for the entire planet. You have people praying for the hurting, um, the widows, the widowers. You know, they pray for people who are mentally going through challenges, saying, or people who lost loved ones. People are always praying for people they don't even know. So whether you recognize it or not, you have been prayed for. Hmm. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. Tell us a Thank little you. bit about your spiritual journey. Have you always been a person of faith? Is that a gift your parents gave to you? Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. 
Yes, I've always been uh, a person of faith. My mother and father, um, they too were Christians as well, and they raised um, their children up as well. But um, I was the average teenager, and when I got into my elder, my older te teens, into my um, early twenties, I kind of stepped out of the um, religious realm, and I kind of ventured out into the clubs and other things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But uh, I went through some horrific things in my own life that caught, caught me to go back to, to Christ right. uh, and to uh, hold on to his unchanging hand and the forgiveness that I felt, um, redemptive love that I felt from God. Um, I just had to share it no matter what you've been through, no matter yeah. what you're going through even right now. His redemptive love is like a covering mm. and he doesn't care what it was. All he cares is that his children came back to him. Yeah. And, and it's such uh, a more peaceful love that place to be, right? Him. Yes. Yeah. And uh just just knowing that he loves you. And yeah. if if we under if we only understood how much he cared, and that in our everyday life, he cares about our everyday life what we're going through and he's right there all we have to do is call him all mm -hmm. we have to do is seek him he's right there and he's so willing to be a part of our lives mm -hmm. every aspect of it absolutely yes. how do you hope your book impacts readers who have their own struggles of faith hope and love well what i what i set out to do was for one to let the readers know that God loves them. He sees them. Um, we we tend to think, oh, all the mil millions and billions of people on the planet, how does God see me? Well, he does. And he cares about you. Everything about you from um, from when you're born until when we, we were deceased, he cares. I want the reader to understand that. And that when you make decisions in your life, look to God. He He mm -hmm. wants you to. He wants to be a part of every part of your life. So I want the reader to see how um, Nola Allen, just a person just working the everyday work life, and there's what anything special about her, but God saw something special about her, and he was actually there for her. And I want the person who reads this book to see that how how special they are to God as well and that he cares and um that we're human and uh, we have to forgive ourselves because we have um a tendency to um, blame ourselves for our mistakes and we start carrying those mistakes around like a big book bag on mm -hmm. our back and God doesn't want us to do that he wants us to bring all those things to him yeah. and he because he's big enough to handle them yeah. And he wants us to concentrate on loving one another and to uh, live a good life. Absolutely. Have you envisioned yes. this book perhaps as a movie? I do. I can yeah. see Manola and Raymond on the big screen. <laughs> Great. And, uh, because they're, they're so full of love. And yeah. it's the type of love that's so, so um, special. And it's so... Um, untainted and mm. it's innocent and it's the type of love that we need to spread around the world you know we're not judging we're just loving mm. and uh, i want and i was asked well what what genre do you think your book is mm. and i don't want to actually put it in a category i want it for all people yeah. for all time because it's love is just love yeah. and what does the world need love yeah. what do we need to do with each other love yeah. and um that's what my message is for the mm. world it's just this is a book of love it's a book of hope mm. and it's a book of faith those three things yeah well that's what i was going to say it, when i was thinking about the genre for this book i was going to say it's basically a love-filled faith-filled novel right Yes, yes. Which is uh, a broad category, of course, but uh, it does strike a lot of chords, this book, for sure. Divine intervention is a theme in your book. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yes. Um, 
I think if you're open, you're prayerful, and this is for anyone. Um, you don't have to be a, a evangelist or a minister or something. Anyone who has the faith of God, if you open your heart and you open your mind to him, he speaks to us. Half the time we're so busy. We're so busy with life. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to make a living. We have to work. We have to do this. We have to take care of the family, the kids. But if, when we slow down and we really listen, mm -hmm. he's always talking, always talking. Yeah. Um, he cares so much about our everyday life. And uh, that's something you have to make time for. It's to sit down, get quiet, and listen. He would direct you. He would direct you in the path in which you should follow. And I think because he gives us all gifts, every last one yeah. of us, we have some type of gift. And he wants us to operate in that gift because that gift is going to touch lives it's going to touch people it's going to get its message of love throughout this world and whether you're an artist or you're or you uh write books or you're an athlete it, it doesn't matter mm. you use your gift for the glory of god yeah and show the love that he has he has so much love yeah and you have to keep your eyes your ears and your heart open to the Lord yes. also, yes. because yes. like you said, he's there always. It's just that some people will tune him out rather than tune him in because to live a disciplined, decent life sometimes is harder. Yeah, uh, it, on, it, on it, some yeah it takes something. Yeah, yeah. It, it does take on a discipline. selfish level. Yeah. And, yeah. but you know, and you can grow into that discipline as well. That Absolutely. shouldn't scare you off. Absolutely. It, you can grow into that, exactly. but you just have to have a lot a life in the heart of love yeah. and I try to um, live my life as well like that yeah. um, it's so easy to get dis discouraged um, and get angry we have we see a lot of that now mm. a lot of angry people mm. um, but my my thoughts and my words on that is you know love them love them yeah. Yeah. and it's hard but love them yeah. because there's no Nothing greater in this world, nothing greater than love. Yeah, exactly. That nothing. you do to the least of my brothers, so, that you do unto me, right? Yes. Yeah, without yes. a doubt. The name of the book is Someone Pray For Me, A Story of Faith, Hope, and Love by Annie Beckley Newell. It is a terrific book. It will renew your faith. It will renew your belief in the power of prayer. And you will also embark upon exploring a wonderful, true love story. It's wonderful. Annie, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us. Thank you, Logan. Thank you my, so much. My pleasure. Great having you here. Great talking with you. God bless. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight. <laughs>